Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to do a real quick video on making a bench hook. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is I'm about to do a uh, multi-part video on what I think are the essential tools uh, for beginning woodworkers. There'll be a few power tools, probably more hand tools because at the beginning, you know, we don't have a lot of money to spend on this thing. I'm not going to say how much it's going to cost. I know guys like to do the sub 100 woodworking set. I'm not going to say that because the tools that I think are proper as I go through this will be the tools that we pick. At the end, we'll know about what it costs. It will be inexpensive. I'm not going out for big, expensive tools here. But there are a few jigs that you need as part of your essential woodworking, and I'm building them now so that I have them when I do the video. I figured, what the heck, I might as well film them. Um, so this, you guys have seen me use before in some videos. This guy is about the end of his rope here. Now this is a, as you can see, it's a half inch piece of a, a low grade plywood that I just stuck. On the bottom you put a little cleat. What the cleat does is allow you to firmly hold it to your bench and then there's a fence. Um, the only things that matter with one of these things in dimension is you don't want it to be longer than the width of your bench because then you'll be pushing over the edge. So obviously the width of your bench is a determining factor. The only other uh, determining factor is the height of the fence piece that you glue on. The reason for that is this is a multi-use tool. As you can see I have a sawing area here where you can take your saw hold the board close to the fence and saw quickly um, past the fence. I like to put a slot in the fence when I really make, need to make a more exacting cut. You know, it's just a miter slot. Again, that's not ne really necessary. Uh, a good sawyer really just makes the next step easier. Uh, nobody really is capable of sawing to every line perfect to do joinery. So you always saw in the waste uh, and then chisel, sand, scrape, whatever you're going to do to get to your line. So I'm not saying uh, being a good sawyer isn't necessary, but as a beginner, just make sure you saw in the waste. The next steps will get you there. So you can either cut here or cut here. Uh, the other very useful thing for one of these is some people like to use them as planing stops and that's where the dimension of this piece of wood matters you can see here if I wanted to plane this thin piece of wood put it up to the stop obviously I can't because I'm going to hit the fence but a thicker piece of wood I can put up against this and plane nicely that's where this dimension comes in. And over time, you're gonna end up with a few of these of different sizes. I would recommend having one with a lower fence for planing and one with a little bit higher fence, maybe like that, for sawing. And what we're gonna build here is one with a little bit higher fence for sawing. So let's put this guy away. I'll keep him. He's, he's about at the end of his rope, as you can see, but he still has some uses. Uh -oh. When he breaks, he breaks. What you need to do this is three pieces of wood. This is a better quality piece of plywood. This looks like a piece of Baltic birch plywood. Um, it was just a scrap. You, you built this with scraps. All I did was take a piece of this plywood and cut the end off to make the cleat. So in theory, this should be square. but And, and the cleat, to be honest with you, Try to get it square, but the squareness of the cleat doesn't really matter. If you're canted a little bit this way or this way, it's not the end of the world. But you know what? We're trying to be exact here, so let's do the best we can. And as you can see, or no, you can't, but I am flush to the back and sides here. And, and honestly, it might be a 30 second off, but it's pretty darn close. That That is just the the... the disparity in this cut. So the first step is to just glue this down. 
Looks like I need a new bottle of glue, huh? Use the old built-in finger spreader. Now, normally when I do this, I have my nail gun right there and I just shoot some pins into this thing. But because we're doing this for a beginning woodworking tutorial, I will go against that and I won't use my pin gun. Now I'm going to square up that little 30 second we were off, which will just leave a little bit of little bit of a gap at the back end, but that's okay. You just want to take a few clamps and this will, there's no way to put a clamp down on these things and not have it wiggle on the glue. So I'm just going to get them in place and I'm going to re-square it. Okay, we will let this dry. That's good and square. Uh, and then we'll come back to the next step, which is seating the uh, fence. So I'll see you when the glue dries. Okay, everyone, uh, the glue is dried on the cleat. These clamps are on here. So as you can see, the purpose of the cleat, flip this over, it just goes up dead against the uh, the side of the bench. Now we need to put the uh, the fence on. This is a little more important to get square for me because I'm going to put a miter slot in this thing. And as I put this flush and flush, you can see I left it about three quarters of an inch shy of the edge here. That's going to be where I just do rough saw and the saw can just go right by the uh, fence and not hit it. And it looks like we are flush all the way around here so I can just glue that right there. I don't know where your glue is. Good and square. Don't think these are going to stretch that far, but let me think they will. Alright, now that moved. They always do with these things. Because we know it's square, we can just get it flush to the back and we should be good. So we'll let that dry, I'll come back and I'll put a miter slot in here and I'll show you how to use it. Hey everybody, welcome back. I, uh, I have let the glue dry on the fence. So in essence, if you're just making yourself a flat saw bench hook, you're done. Um, literally now at this point, if I wanted to saw a piece of wood, piece of wood you put you put the the, uh, the cleat up to the end of your bench and then you hold it tightly and 
and make your cut. So that, in essence, is the end of the build. I like to do one modification, which is to put a miter slot right in here. guy doesn't like you know, if you don't have if you don't have it flat to the bench I had to have that raised because the guide is hitting so that was a little awkward but it did get me a nice straight line started which I can now finish up do one cut here with this line I don't like the I, I don't think I got this line perfect and that's actually okay what I think it does is it gives me a nice square edge which it does but as you can see you probably can't hear I'm a little bit off on the angle this way and this line is slightly canted this way when I stopped using the jig I twisted my wrist a little bit the line's good enough for what I need. The next jig we're going to build is the shooting board, which cleans an end up perfectly. Uh, just to see what's coming in the next video, <clears throat> this is a shooting board. Uh, this is a large one. I'm going to build a much smaller one for this bench size. Um, what it does is it takes this end that we just cut, and you take a plane, run it along like that and it just squares the edge up. Um, that's the next video that's coming up. We'll build this shooting board. The combination of the shooting board and the bench hook are the two jigs we need to make before I can do the all-inclusive tools you need to get started in woodworking because the basic tool set needs these tool jigs to do some of their work. So thanks for watching. Tune into the next video. We'll do the shooting board and then this weekend hopefully I'll post the 10 to 12 tools that I think are essential.